is a rotary plasma engine. First one ever. My name is Donnell Roberts. I'm the author of Particle Mechanics, The Theory of Energy States. This engine was theoretical. It no longer is. We've built one. It works. It runs totally on a plasma or a gyrokinetic energy cycle. Uh, first one that's ever been done as a rotary. Now, we're going to show you it again here. We're going to show you a close-up. This is a voltmeter that shows you the output. It's actually hooked to a generator. So watch as we go to the close-up. Notice, we're generating electricity. Now we're going to show you the pieces of this engine. There is only one moving part, a rotor, in the middle here. Now, we have two heads on this, on both ends here. You can see both of those. Inside of those, we're going to take them apart and we're going to show them what you, what, what's in those. This is based on the, uh, the original, what PAP idea had was, of, of, a, of an engine that runs on noble gases. Bob Rohner is the one who built this engine. And he's also made these heads and he's also one, the one that has the electronics behind this. Now, underneath here, if you look underneath here, we have a DC motor. Uh, it's like a 2,000, what is it, Bob, 2,000 watt? Yeah. And it, which is about 2 horsepower. Motor generator, yeah. It's a motor generator, so it can run either way. Now, if you can kind of look over on the side, we have a little switch here uh, that can turn it on and off with the battery. I'm going to turn it on here, and you can see what the battery and, and the motor itself outputs. See that? A little over 10. And then you turn it off, and the motor goes down, or, or, or stops. Now that's the pieces that we have. Now, we have lots of electronics that run this. And that is the uh, secret that Bob Rohner knows that makes this all possible. Now, one of the things is, I'll take this wire off the battery so that you know this is the hot wire. We're going to take this off the battery so you know it doesn't uh, use that. Now we're going to fire it up here and you see it'll run. Now, if I turn my switch on and off over here, I mean, we're not using the battery or the motor to run itself, but you can see the output of the plasma. Now, what's going on here? Well, inside of these heads is a, is a, a process, uh, I think it's very similar to thunder and lightning. There's a condition that, that exists uh, with noble gases. Whenever you fire this or cause it, it causes an expansion, and we're going to talk about it at the end. And that expansion expands and strikes the rotor, and it just disappears. There is no heat in this. I can touch these. Notice that. And that's been consistent with these. Now, there has been three other uh, engines that have been built. And we're going to show you or talk about, we'll show you two of the engines and talk about the other one. Now, over here, this is actually the third engine that runs. It's a twin, uh, twin cylinder, two piston engine. It's run, it's a prototype, it's a test engine uh, to, uh, to prove how this process works. Uh, now, Bob Rotor is able to work on this and the rotary at the same time. He uses some of the same controls, so this is not running. There's videos on it. Now, this is actually the third engine that runs with this process. Joe Papp built one. In the 1980s, he hired Bob and Tom Rohner. Uh, that engine produced about 100 horsepower. Uh, it was a twin cylinder uh, at about 1,000 uh, RPMs. It's 650 uh, foot-pound of torque. Uh, those are three engines that run that were successful, all built by Bob Rohner. Now, there was another engine uh, that Joe Papp built in the 1960s. And uh, that one got out of control and actually blew up and killed someone. So this, this process here that you're doing it's got some dangers to go with it, and you want to go at it real slow. We call this the Roberts, or Bob did, called it the Roberts Rotary Engine. 
uh, because that's what it is. We're going to take it apart. Just so you know, this is the first prototype. The tolerances on this for where this rotor turns inside of this housing is what was it? Then it, it about ten thousand clearance on the rotor there. Ten thousand. That's Bob Rotor speaking. And so this is a precision machine uh, rotor. Uh, it's mounted on top of a uh, DC motor and a shaft. These are plexiglass so we can see it and so we can test things. Now, right now we only have two heads on it. We can put two more. We can get more power by that way. We're going to experiment with nozzles. And one of the things is, uh, when we take it apart, we'll show you what we have right now. And we think we can get a lot more power with nozzles. Now, one of the things is, if you remember, or if you've ever studied Orville and Wilbur Wright when they flew their airplane, <clears throat> the number one thing that they were doing was control. And that's what we got to do in this, and that's what Bob Rotary is very good at, control. We are controlling the process here. Now, like if Orville Wilbur Wright, the first time they flew, I think they flew in a, into a 25 mile an hour wind, and it was seven mile an hour. All right? That's where we're at with this. It runs. We're getting, it's like flying, getting it off the ground. You wouldn't take that airplane, all right, and put a jet engine on it the next day and say, will it fly past faster than the speed of sound? So we're going to make some slow progress with this. Now, can we produce more power than what we have right now? And the answer is yes, and we're going to show you some of that. All right, now we're going to up the power. The power's up, uh, and we're only going to do this once. So we're going to fire it up, and it'll run. Pay real close attention and watch how fast this goes up. What did we hit there? The voltage. About 12. About 12. That was pretty good. Did you notice the increase in the power by upping the voltage? Now what we're going to do is um, we're going to take the motor apart and we're going to show you the pieces of it and how simple this thing is. you saw for yourself uh, what we're going to do. Now, one of the things we're going to try and do is we're going to experiment with nozzles. The nozzles are going to direct the flow. Right now we're just going in with a straight circle onto the edges of the rotors. Now, how big is our rotor? Right now it's uh, 9 inches. So, what can you do to get more power? You can make this bigger. You can make your diameter bigger, you can put more heads on, and you can change the, the directional flow. We have patent pending on all this stuff, in case you're wondering. All right, what am I going to claim on this motor? It runs. It generates electricity. That's what I'm claiming. Now, as far as the input and the output, you saw the output, you do your own calculation. You saw it, it's on the video. Now, what is the theoretical potential for this engine? Well, the based on, based on diameter, number of heads, but from the original PAP engine, which there's a lot of information about the PAP, he had a twin cylinder uh, engine, it was a three inch head, and they got about 50 horsepower out of each of the heads, or each of the pistons. Now, if we can get 50 horsepower out of each head, 
don't know if that's possible or not, an engine like this then with four heads could produce 200 horsepower. And it is very possible it could be more than that because this is going to run at much higher RPMs. It's a rotor. It could spin at 10,000 RPMs. Until we get there, we just don't know. Now, some of the physics. I have another video called the Robert Rohner video where I explain in a lot more detail something I call the plasma energy cycle. Uh, we don't know what we're really going to call this yet. Could call it the Rohner effect. Uh, could be gyrokinetic uh, movement. Don't know yet. But with my theory, one of the things that's different is the atom. Rather than taking an atom that has a proton at the center and one electron orbiting around, I have something called a key ring atom. And what I have is one particle holding thousands of particles. Now a rough model, model then would look like this. The middle I have something called a proton ring. And in each of the little grooves, it's like a twisted DNA strand. And each of the grooves is a particle spinning. The faster the particle spins, the bigger the ring gets. So now, what we're doing here is, when this head is charged, there's thorium in there. Thorium emits alpha particles. And an alpha particle would just be like four proton rings, which is a, a helium with no electron rings. When it sparks, this flies through the gases. Whenever it strikes an atom, any of the atoms, any of the noble gases, and it comes by and it hits, it's going to strike these electron rings and they're going to get bigger. So, inside here, the gases, you're going to have, let's just say, billions of particles. Whenever this goes through, strikes some of those billions of particles inside of those atoms, it's going to knock some loose. If you've seen the videos, light comes out. Electricity comes out and movement comes out. When these rings get big, if they strike another atom, they, they knock them apart. The other thing is, as they get bigger, it causes a swell. And that swell is what helps cause the movement inside of this. And the way you have to look at it is, the head fires, the movement inside of this is now going in one direction. And when you put that on top of there, that movement hits the rotors and moves the rotors. Now, every time you fire, you have more alpha particles, and there's plenty of energy left in those atoms to knock more of them out of their rings. Now, some of these particles will re be replenished by gravity. You're going to have to study the rest of my theory. Go to ParticleMechanics.com to understand how gravity works with all this. You may not ever need to replenish the gases once you fill it up. Now, you have to seal the gases in. So as far as this engine goes, normally if you had two shafts, they're going to have to be sealed all the way around. You charge it up with the gases and they should be uh, fine. Now, they may be pleat. Nobody knows yet, but if they do, you're just going to have to fill them back up. Now, if you look at this engine, there is no input, there is no exhaust. So if you use this engine on a car, you will not have an exhaust system. There is no crankcase oil, no antifreeze, no cooling system. And since you don't have any seals other than sealing the rotors on the outside, the engine should not wear out. The footprint for the planet to build this is very small. And the amount of energy that you can put out of this uh, could literally be unlimited. And that's what we're after is unlimited energy. And remember, physics and chemistry are easy with the correct geometry.